Hey, welcome to a bonus episode of the Wall Street Wildlife Podcast. I'm Luke Hallard, and I'm here with my co-host. Christoph Pikarski, monkey, at your service. Uh, so, monkey, you're at our service. You're going to help me break down what we think of the Apple Vision Pro as a little bonus episode for our uh, loyal subscribers. I've been looking at this one for a little while. Like The technology got announced, what, six, seven months ago? But just today, they've announced that uh, they're going to be selling it as a retail unit. You can get your hands on this thing from February next month. So you know what's interesting is that I've been an Apple uh, loyalist since I was 13 years old. Pretty much at the front of the line for each product. I, I mean, from, I mean, yeah, all the computers, lapped, I mean, all of it. It's curious that this is the first gadget that's obviously a new thing where I'm probably going to skip getting it. And the reason is, uh, one, I haven't experienced it yet. So I, I imagine if I actually experienced it and, and if the reports are anywhere close to how cool and different it is, I, I could probably talk myself into it. But there's this, I'm pretty confident that because the battery is external to the unit, that the second or third iteration will be leaps and bounds better, and I'll regret being an early adopter. You know, here's your chance, right? You should do what everyone, investors say, this whole adage that uh, if instead of buying Apple technology, because let's face it, it is bloody expensive. If instead of buying the gadget, you bought Apple stock with that money, then uh -huh. you do fantastic. So here you go. This is three and a half thousand dollars that you're about to not spend on a Vision Pro, like first version, buy some Apple shares instead. Yeah, that's good thinking. So let's talk about the stock. I have two, two uh, bullish and one bearish uh, banana and a rotten banana in the column. So how does this sound to you? In the bull case, I think Apple is the only company in the world that really they can create a brand new category out of thin air. And I think back to the iPods, uh, when at first, you know, people were mocking them. They look funny coming out of your ears. And lo and behold, it's a multi-billion dollar whatever uh, industry, right? And they're fantastic, despite the criticism, right? So uh, probabilistically, I think the Vision Pro will become its own new thing. So for me, that's a, that, that's a reason to, to, to invest. Second reason to invest is I really don't think Apple is going to sit there, twiddle their thumbs while AI goes bananas. They're going to, I guess, via the, the headset and their dominance in the world of technology, they will somehow compete in AI and how, I don't know, but it's just too good of a setup. So that's another case, I think, to stay, to, to care about Apple. They're too well positioned not to, right? You want to guess what my, what my bear case is? Valuation? Not that's really. Realistic. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think because they're doing share buybacks and like the, their cash position is so strong, I think valuation is not, I, I think they can make that piece of it work. I, I'm generally concerned about the planned obsolescence and the upgrade cycle with Apple. Like I was saying earlier, I love getting me new fancy Apple gadgets. But my iPhone 13 is so damn good that for the last two years, I mean, it's it just has not failed me in any way whatsoever. And when I was thinking about getting the 14, I'm like, and, you know, no need. And the 15, the same thing. For an Apple fanboy to say that, especially now, I imagine anyone that's gotten the 15, I because it's still such a dominant part of their revenue, I really don't see what they could do to make, say, the people who got the 13, 14, or 15 to all of a sudden, you know, throw down $1,500 for the new model. 
I'm I'm thinking like holy shit if if half of Apple's revenues uh slows down precipitously that could be one of those well done hindsight of course the stock's going to crater you can't just make up you know however many hundreds of billions do- dollars like that I, I'm not a shareholder and uh if you live in my house you're not permitted to own Apple technology <laughs> I've banned it I'm a, I'm a Google guy to the core uh because it is so damn overpriced and you're so locked in. I used to be a techie guy, so, you know, us geeks, us, like, hidden geeks, we don't like Apple stuff, really. Um, that's for the marketing fancy people. Um, but, like, my understanding of their market is that the majority of these people do want the latest iPhone and they're happy to spring, like, over a $1,000 a go for one because uh, it's a status symbol as much as it is a functional piece of technology. Well, see, that's the thing. That's why I think using myself as a test case is an interesting uh, Peter Lynchian, you know, frame here. Buy what you know, right? Buy what I am as dedicated an Apple guy as get. I mean, I'm not in the 0.01%. I, I'm not sleeping outside at the store, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm committed, right? It's, it's just not obvious that I need the latest gadget in that whole status symbol thing. I remember when that was a thing. Same thing happened with the Tesla Model 3. Like it felt cool, right? Like, it, but that moment is gone. When you take in an Apple phone now, no one gives a shit. Like, no one, no one gives a shit mostly. I mean, at least in the US as far as I could tell. And whether your Apple logo is the 15, 14, or 13, Either people don't give a shit or you can't tell predominantly. So that whole status game thing is over. Oh, man, it's a tough call. Um, Are you a shareholder? No. <laughs> the answer is I'm not a shareholder of much of anything anymore because of my <laughs> my recent bear outfit. So <laughs> it, it's a very bizarre world I live in for myself now. But honestly, hearing myself talk about this makes me think that the stock will probably go sideways more than it's going to go up or down sure. as a balancing act. We, uh, in our predictions episode, we talked about which of the Magnificent Seven was going to outperform, underperform. Like I definitely see Apple as a, a kind of mid-ranker there. Probably not doesn't have the same downside risk that something like NVIDIA perhaps does. But um, like I don't see them doubling from where they are in any realistic time frame. That's right. I think the weight on the, on the iPhone itself, because it could possibly be so heavy, to make up some of those revenues, my guess is that the later generations of the Vision Pro are what might do it. But we won't see that for a few years. So in the meantime, add one more, add one more trouble, you know, trouble point. If I'm at all correct about some deep recessionary bad macro stuff unfolding in the next year, what's one of the first things that are going to go? Like, you know, $1,500 phones that you really don't need because the one you have is already good enough. I mean, right? And you're right. right? And so, sure, a few early adopters are going to get the Vision Pro. Uh, Yeah, but that's not going to right move the needle yeah i think it's great that they are evolving the category like i like the idea of the metaverse i think it's been a long time before culturally it's been adopted in the same way as like you know zoom for example like how that's become much more ubiquitous and other video conferencing platforms like the metaverse stuff will get there one day but probably not the net probably not this decade um Mm. but it's nice that apple have jumped into the ring with meta to try and move things forward Agree. So what I hear myself saying is I would not be uh, a buyer of Apple right now. Um, I'm putting it in the rotten ben- banana column. Two years from now, could could revisit, right? Especially if we get some uh, serious pullbacks on the price. It's a company I would love to, to own for the long term, but now's not the time as far as I could tell. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I uh, It's not one I'm a super fan of and... Uh, but I like the stock more than I like the products they make, for myself, anyway. Right. Yeah, that, that's a good way of thinking of it. I'd like to to have both. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, that's uh, that's been a quick uh, shallow dive into what's happening for anyone who's interested in Apple 
Hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. In the next couple of days, we're also going to drop out another little short where we're going to be talking about Christoph's investment in Rocket Lab and why he might be backtracking on uh, his option strategy. And we're going to answer an interesting question from one of our YouTube subscribers on what are zero day to expiry options and how should you use them or how shouldn't you? Tune in for that one soon. Oh.